We're going to solve for a series parallel circuit here. And of course the characteristics of a series parallel circuit is that we have a combination of components in both series and parallel arrangements. So to get started on a problem like this, and actually before we actually start doing the calculations, let's take a look and see what we've got going on here. Um, this is really just a combination of one and two ohm resistors hooked together powered by a 12 volt battery. So let's take a look and see what the current flow pattern might look like. And as we can see this is a, a representation of the current. And we see that it splits up at one point into two smaller currents that join back up again and produce the original current. So let's go ahead and get started on the problem. The first thing we want to do with a problem like this is typically we want to work from as far away from the battery as we can get and work our way towards the battery. And we ultimately want to end up with a equivalent resistance, what we call an equivalent resistance, which is really just a single resistor that acts like all those other resistors that's connected to our power supply. And so to work towards that goal, let's take a look at the far right. And on the far right, we have three resistors that are connected in series. Um, and we can distinguish a series connected set of resistors by the fact that they're one resistor after another connected together. And so we have a 1 ohm, um, a second 1 ohm, and a 2 ohm resistor connected in series and those three resistors in series are connected across a 2 ohm resistor okay but that 2 ohm resistor is not part of this series circuit that we're trying to simplify and so to find the equivalent resistance for those series resistors we just simply add them together so we have 1 ohm plus 1 ohm plus 2 ohm is 4 ohms when we get done we have an equivalent circuit that looks like this. So we've simplified those three resistors on the right into one 4 ohm resistor that's connected across the 2 ohm resistor. Now these two resistors, the 2 ohm and the 4 ohm, are not connected in series. They are connected in parallel. For series resistors we simply just add them together we need to remember that resistance is simply volts per amp. It's the amount of voltage you need per amp. And so when we say we have a 2 ohm resistor, we really mean we have a 2 volt per amp resistor. We need 2 volts to get 1 amp through it. And for a 4 ohm resistor, we have 4 volts per amp. We need 4 volts across it to get an amp. For parallel connected resistors, we really need to find the amps per volt for a resistor because the common thing that two parallel resistors have in common is voltage, not current. In series resistors, it's current that's common. We can simply add them together. For parallel connected resistors, it's voltage that's common. So we need to find a unit we call conductance, which is really the reciprocal of resistance. It's sort of the inverse of resistance. So the conductance of a 2 ohm resistor is simply 1 over 2. So it's half of a mo. We, we use a, a term called mo's. There's another unit called the semen. It's a little bit more cumbersome to use and I just prefer to use the Mo because it's more intuitively obvious that Mo is sort of the inverse of resistance. It's Ohm spelled backwards. So to find the equivalent resistance for these two parallel connected resistors we're simply going to add one half of a Mo plus a quarter of a Mo. So we have 1 over 2 plus 1 over 4. And when we do the math, we end up with three quarters of a mo. And of course, this is conductance. 
So if we want to get back to resistance again, we have to take the reciprocal of Mohs. Mohs is in amps per volt. And when we take the reciprocal of that, we come up with 4 thirds of an ohm. And 4 thirds of an ohm is 1.33 ohms. So we can now take those two resistors and treat them like a single resistor. And that single resistor circuit looks like this. And of course this is three resistors connected in series. And it's pretty easy to find the equivalent resistance of this circuit because all we have to do is add 1 plus 1 1.33 plus 1 and we come up with 3.33 ohms is our equivalent resistance for this circuit, for the whole circuit. So this is what the battery sees, if you will. It's, it's the resistance that the battery is pushing against is 3.33 ohms. Even though we had all that stuff connected to this battery, the equivalent resistance that the battery sees is 3.33 ohms. So to find the current, we just take 3.33 ohms and we divide that into our voltage, 12 volts. So 12 divided by 3.33 gives us 3.6 amps is the current coming out of the battery. Okay, so let's take a look and see if that's exactly what we've got here. I'm going to take my little ammeter here. I can move this around. And it's telling me, yes, the current is 3.6 amps. And it's 3.6 amps coming out of the battery, and of course it's 3.6 amps going into the battery. It wouldn't change anywhere. It's going to be 3.6 everywhere in this equivalent circuit that we've, we've created. If we go back to the original circuit, even though we have all these resistors back in place, and this whole network of resistors acts like a single 3.33 ohm resistor, we notice that the current that we've calculated, the 3.6 amps, flows through the both leftmost resistors, the 1 ohm resistor on the left on the top and the 1 ohm resistor on the left on the bottom. All the current must flow through those two resistors. You can see there's no other path for it to, to go. So we can say that the voltage across those two resistors is going to be the 3.6 amps that's flowing through them times their resistance or 3.6 volts. And that's for the upper 1 ohm resistor and the bottom 1 ohm resistor on the left. And now we've got to shift gears a little bit. If that's true, then the voltage drop across those resistors added together gives us a voltage of 7.2 volts. And what's missing between that 7.2 volts and the 12 volts from the battery is 4.8 volts. If you take 12 volts minus the 7.2 volt drop across both, res both resistors, you end up with a 4.8 volt drop. And that 4.8 volt drop is across that 2 ohm resistor in the center of the circuit. Those three resistors, if you look at a loop, moving through those three resistors, it has to add up to the power supply voltage. So we can use that information, that's Kirchhoff's voltage law, to say with certainty that the voltage across that 2 ohm resistor is 4.8 volts. Once we know that voltage and we know the resistance of the 2 ohm resistor, then we can calculate the current through the resistor. Um, and that's going to be 4.8 volts divided by 2 ohms, which is 2.4 amps. And we have several different ways of finding out what the current is in that last branch on the right. Well, we can either use the fact that we have an equivalent resistance on the right of 4 ohms and 
divide the 4.8 volts across those three resistors that add up to 4 ohms. If we divide 4.8 by 4, that will give us 1.2 amps. The other thing we can use to solve for that is the fact that the current splits up at the node, so we have 3.6 amps coming into the node. We know we have 2.4 amps going one direction in the node. So we have 3.6 coming in, we have 2.4 leaving in one direction, and that leaves 1.2 amps leaving in the other direction. The sum of the currents entering the node has to equal the currents leaving the node. And this is Kirchhoff's current law. Now once we've come up with the currents, it's a simple matter to find the voltage drops across the remaining resistors just by using the current times the resistance of each resistor. So for the top 1 ohm resistor on the right, it's simply going to be 1.2 amps times 1 ohm, which is 1.2 volts. For the second 1 ohm resistor on the right, same thing applies. 1.2 amps times 1 ohm is 1.2 volts. And we have the 2 ohm resistor on the bottom right. And so 1.2 amps times 2 ohms is 2.4 volts. When we add those voltages together, they should give us the 4.8 volts across the combination of those three resistors. We know that there's 4.8 volts across the three resistors, so 1.2 volts plus 1.2 volts plus 2.4 volts should equal 4.8, and it does. That's our check. And if we go through any particular loop in this circuit, the voltages across the resistors in that loop should equal the power supply voltage. So if we look at the first loop, we have 3.6 volts plus 4.8 volts plus 3.6 volts again should equal 12, and it does. And if we go through the outer loop, we should have 3.6 volts plus 1.2 volts plus 1.2 volts plus 2.4 volts plus 3.6 volts should equal 12 volts, and it does. So once you've gotten this solved to this point, there's a number of ways to check. And of course, the best way to check is if you put all your calculations or all your, um, take your circuit diagram and throw it into the circuit construction kit like this, you can actually go through and check everything. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to go take um, and insert a voltmeter here. Um, I'm also going to insert my ammeter. This is a little, what they call a non-contact ammeter. This lets us look at currents without actually having to break the circuit. So let's check our current. We calculated 3.6 amps and there we go. We have 3.6 amps coming into the battery and leaving the battery. Our current flowing through this particular branch is 2.4 amps. That's what we calculated and that's what we've got. Our current flowing through this branch is 1.2 amps and of course the current doesn't change anywhere in this branch. If we look at the voltages, we calculated a voltage across this resistor here of 3.6 volts and sure enough that's what we've got. If we move our probes up to this resistor, we get a 3.6 volts again. Our voltage across this resistor here is 4.8 and our voltage across each of these resistors here are 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 